In this video, Texas goes from 80 degrees to 40 degrees. No, it didn't take me two months to get these things done that are on this video. Um, it's just that Texas weather is bipolar. It took me about two weeks. Um, I have a starter going in, um, a battery. Uh, what's even more exciting to me was the uh, radiator and fans. Got those in and wired up. So some exciting stuff happening on the 68 Resto Mod. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm getting ready to wire up these other two relays. Um, let's see if you can see them back there, the two on the left in the middle. Um, these are gonna be for the fans when I get those. Planning on going tomorrow to Summit. I'm gonna see if they have any um, radiator fan combos in stock along with the starter and a battery. Um, I don't know if I'll get the battery from Summit or not, but um, if I get the starter and the radiator in, um, we're looking in pretty close to starting. Um, but if I get these wired up now, ready to go, then uh, <clears throat> that'll get us a little bit further along today. Um, these are a little bit different than the way I wired up the um, that starter relay. So the starter relay is the one on the right. And if you remember, I ran that green cable goes out to where the starter is gonna go. And then we have a um, black cable that we ran to ground. That's the one that's you can see on the um, right there. That's on the screw there. And then we ran the red cable to the ignition. So that's a power activated um, relay um, so that when we turn the key, it activates the power. Um, the fans are going to be ground activated relays and so um, the difference there is we're going to wire these um, black wires the black and white it looks like there and then uh, the black and pink right there to our harness over here and these are labeled fan one and fan two and that's going to be the um, activation so that the ecu can run these fans uh, based on the temperature of the engine. Um, <clears throat> so that'll be the difference to these black wires. Instead of going to, just to a ground, they're going to go to the ECU. We're going to run the red wires to um, power, and then we still have the power because this whole bundle has a single power cable going up to the battery, um, if you remember. So, um, so this should be a pretty straightforward wiring so i'm going to get uh, some of that done right now and then uh oh and then the solid color color wire so the pink wire and the white wire are going to go to the uh, fans themselves so those are going to run up uh, into the cabin and man i got a mess going through that hole right now um that's gonna get cleaned up i'm gonna um when i get the uh, ac system there's gonna be a panel that comes on there and i'm gonna have to cut that up and put the wires through it and then loom it all. So hopefully it looks good when I get it done. Um, I'm doing the best I can uh, with what I got to work with, um, but I think it'll look all right. All right, and so I did the quote unquote easy part first. I separated the pink and white wire here because those are gonna go to the fan. And since I don't have the fans in yet, I just ran them. Oh, let me get out of the car here. It's not always easy when you're my age. <laughs> um, so I got them running out my big mess of wires here and along here and I just have them bundled up there for right now because I don't know how long I'm going to need them uh, to go over to the fans themselves. I might want to run them down uh, depending on where the fans are wired or up. I'm not sure. Um, so just so you can see what I'm planning on doing here is I'm going to cut a hole or a little notch out of the side of that um, panel that's going to go here and then um, these will run out that side and then I'm going to put another notch on this side for the uh, ECU stuff and clean all that up that way and then I'm going to run these along the tower all loomed together all the way to the front here so I do have a plan. It just looks like a spaghetti mess right now. Um, hopefully it'll look good when I get it done. Um, I did clean these up too. I just threw some, uh, um, what do you call them, spacers on there or the, the separators on there. Um, look a lot better if you ask me. 
Um, so I got that cleaned up. I still have the wires for the um, harness, uh, ECU harness, and um, some of the other wires that I got a loom and stuff. So I got a lot of cleanup to do, but I, I want to hear it run. And that way, if I need to make changes, it's not getting into the loom or anything. I just make the change and then I loom it after I get it fixed. Okay. So off this harness here, we had fan one and fan two um, that I hooked to the two grounds from the relay up there, way up there. <laughs> um, so those are going to be the switched uh, grounds that's going to activate the uh, fans as the uh, ECU tells it to. Um, the ignition, I hooked up these two. So these two um, wires come from that relay. And again, it's just uh, ignition power. So this is a switched power right here. This was the electronic choke that I wasn't going to use um, up front. So I went ahead and used it here. Um, and then finally those two that went up front like I already talked about. And here's what that wiring schematic looks like. Um, again, all three of those relays had one wire going through the um, 50 amp fuse um, to the battery. And then they each had their own color and they hooked to these uh, for the um, ECU. This is the schematics from um, uh, ProFlow. Um, so they each had their own color and then we had those two that went out to the fans the two that i put in together uh, to the switch uh, so that's what it looks like in a schematic and then we'll have to run a ground from the fan well i went to summit today hoping to get a starter and a radiator came back with just a starter they didn't have a um, radiator that would work on my car so looks like I'll be ordering that online um, but got the starter um, got the mini starter I went with the power master uh, power max plus um, only reason I went with this good reviews um, online and pretty straightforward uh, setup so you have your negative positive and then your switch power right there uh, that's what we're gonna be hooking up um, we got to get it up under there and see how it fits. I had to run to Lowe's and get some bolts. Looks like they're um, 3 8 16 by one and a quarter. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna throw it in there and see what it looks like. All right, getting my cobwebs in here. <laughs> it's been way too long since I've been under the car, I guess. Um, so there's the spot where I'm gonna be putting the starter. You can see the uh, flywheel in there. There, it's still blurry. I can't get it to focus back there. I want to focus on these uh, suspension parts. There we go. So now we're, we're focused there. I'm gonna put the starter in there. This would have been a lot easier had I done this out of the car again. Um, you know, live and learn. So let's see how this goes. Well, I ran into my first problem. So I went to go put these bolts in while I had it under the car. And this one slides in just fine. Um, and I'm gonna put this one in. And you can see it runs right into this solenoid and you can't get it in there. Um, so the thing I was thinking is I think these are clockable. So I think I can clock that solenoid over just a little bit and then that'll slide right in. All right, I'm removing these little bolts. Um, I've already taken two out. There's three of them. Uh, I don't know if I'm in frame there. They're these uh, little Allen bolts um, in the front of this. Uh, make sure you get something with a big handle because these things are in there. And you really gotta torque them to get them out. Let's give this a shot here. Uh, there we go. So yeah, you gotta get a hold of these things and then, um, once it's loose, it you know comes out all right. I think I'm gonna put just a dab of Loctite on these. Um, you don't want these backing out um, in the car, so probably do that. I'm gonna put them back in. Yep, the whole thing wants to come off now, which is fine because that's what we're gonna do. 
All right. So you can see this whole front plate came off and it has all these different options for or not. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So looking at it, it only has three holes drilled. So this one is not clockable. Well, I guess you could clock it lit, uh, three different directions. So I'm gonna give that a whirl. I already clocked that back. And now you can see this, this bolt's not coming out. So let me put that in there. Oops. Um, I'm gonna just hold it back and then uh, slide it in, finger tighten it, and hopefully that'll um, go in there like that. We'll find out here in a few minutes. Um, and then I'm gonna have to find something that'll fit because obviously I'm not gonna get a socket on there. So I'll have to get um, a, a box in. All right, that's what it looks like in there. Um, these are both a pain to get to. Uh, you can see I couldn't obviously get to that one um, because of the solenoid. So I had to use a box end wrench and just hand tighten it that way. And then um, this one, I actually couldn't get the uh, ratchet in there because I didn't have enough space between the um, power steering rack and this. And so um, ended up just doing the same thing, box in on that one. Um, I'm not going to get a torque wrench on those, so I, you know, got 32 foot pounds as best as I could um, by hand, I guess, by feel. Uh, now the fun part, I get to do the wiring in there around these headers. So... That ought to be fun, so I'll probably do that tomorrow. Okay, so I crawled into the car and pulled this uh, green cable, which was like 10 times as long as it is right now. Um, and then I figured out how long it would need to be to, eh, can you see it? Can't see the starter, but be to get to the solenoid. Uh, then I gave it a little bit extra, cut it, and then br uh, brought it back up here, put the end on here. This is gonna be the, um, from the relay, so there's gonna what uh, what's gonna when what's going to fire that solenoid when we turn the key. Um, I'm going to tuck it in back this way. Actually, go behind these guys and. Um, What my plan is to so take this down on this side of the headers and then um, try and keep it as far over this direction as I can away from the headers. So I'll probably do something like attaching it to this uh, brake line or something um, to keep it away from the, the heat. Um, and I'll probably put some heat wrap on it at some point um, as well. I also have ceramic coated headers, so that's gonna help. Okay. Here's the wire on the, the uh, solenoid activation wire right here. Um, <laughs> this screws a little bit of pain, or a lot of a pain actually. Um, I'd recommend putting this wire on before you mount the starter. Um, so next I got the um, power wire which will go right on this back side here um, I'm not sure I'm gonna run that one yet because I need to get a battery and find out which side at least find out which side the battery terminals are gonna be on all right well I didn't even get the starter wired in and the radiator showed up along with the fans so I'm gonna unbox these and see how they fit in the car because I'm excited
All right, I'll try shooting from there. I don't know if this is gonna fit just right or not, so we'll take a look here. So there's the original spots right here that I might have to cut off and same with the bottom. Might have to open this thing up a little bit. Um, but I think if we get that in there, I think so, that'll fit all right. And my biggest concern is clearance between the front of the engine and the radiator. Yeah, it won't fit there. Okay. So that gives me an idea. That's gonna be some work. All right, let's get the fans out of there and see if there's any mounting hardware or anything. So there's some work to do with these when you get them. Um, so the fan shroud doesn't come with uh, pre-drilled uh, pre for the holes. So you, uh, uh, I just put the fans in place, obviously making room so that I can, it's pulling air and not, you know, blocked off by the shroud itself. Um, and then uh, marked each hole. Now I'm gonna drill a hole for each of those. And essentially um, these guys go through there and attached to those and um, kind of like a uh, what do you call it um, a rivet but these are little just little plastic guys but they should hold up all right um, so I'm gonna put those on there uh, if you don't like those go with like a real rivet or a bolt or something like that um, just make sure it doesn't protrude enough into the shroud that it's gonna hit the radiator uh, but I'm gonna go with those because that's what they sent me and um, give it a whirl All right, so I got the drilling done as you saw, and then I put these little pads on there. Um, I'm sure that'll insulate some of the vibration from uh, those fans. Uh, the, these little holes just kind of poke out. Um, I used uh, just a tiny little screwdriver at first, but then I realized these work just as well. Um, that, that's the deal from the, um, what do you call it? Uh, the rivet, they, they're kind of like a rivet. So um, I'm gonna, now put the fans on and uh, run these through. I think I'm going to run these through the bottom, uh, put these on top, and uh, see how that looks. And uh, I think that will be, it might be, ah, now that I think about it, it might be cleaner to take these from the top because uh, we're going to have to cut the end off on this and we don't want to see that.
All right, that's what these little plastic rivets look like. Just a little tab on there. And the back side, that's what they look like. So not too bad. I mean, uh, I think on this side, especially oh, on the front side, or yeah, the front side is the front side. <laughs> um, they look pretty good. All right, after a long time of looking for stupid bolts, uh, I'm gonna have to go by the store, but for right now I just threw a little um, screw that wouldn't fit, so I put the fender washers on each side, and I just put two of them in just to hold this in place as I lift it up, and I'm gonna test fit it in the car now. All right, and my major concern is my clearance between the engine and this. So, oh man, we got lots of room. This is gonna be just fine. So, right now I'm touching, but it's because I'm sitting forward. Yeah. All right, there we go. Get this wire out of the way. Okay. So, I just set it kind of like that. Got plenty of clearance there. Um, yeah, that'll work really well. I was worried I was going to have to cut some of this out, and I might still. Let's see if I can get a. Uh, I got these fans on there. I can kind of let this rest. Let me get the camera over here. So what you got is, uh, you can see when I pull this forward, these little um, where the original radiator would have mounted um, is right at the fins, and so obviously I, um, that's not going to work. So I'm going to line line up um, these holes and mark them and then drill, drill, do the same thing over here because uh, this lines up pretty much perfectly with um, this edge here. And so I'm gonna drill that out, um, put some bolts into those. I still may cut these out just for um, more uh just a little bit of a uh, little bit more breathing um but uh, i mean they're really not blocking off a whole lot of space there my bigger concern is um i want to i would put once i drill those holes um some sort of spacer between here and there um to hold this away from uh that so that they're not touching um because i don't want to bend in the fins or anything like that um, so a little bit of work to do to get these champion radiators in. I'm, I mean, for the price, I'm not disappointed. It's, uh, it was a lot less expensive than some of the right fit, um, radiators. And, um, so far, you know, I like it. Uh, I look the, like the look of it. I like the, uh, the quality, um, welds look pretty good and, um, things like that. And so, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, do the little modifications and um, see how it works. All right, I drilled those holes and I, I just went ahead and tested it with the um, radiator and uh, those, those holes lined up. So there's one there, 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 and there. I marked them from the backside and then I um, kind of lined up my finger on each one and uh, marked it on the front side of the car because it's easier to drill in from this way. Um, so just something stupid I had to do. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I'm gonna go by um, hardware store and I'm going to pick up uh, bolts and nuts to go in there. And I'm also gonna put, um, get a, like a rubber spacer. Um, I don't have a whole lot of room, but I do have enough room between the fans and the front of the engine that um, I could put a little space in there and get that uh, radiator off of these guys uh, without worrying about cutting them out. Uh, if I cut those out, I'm going to have to clean up the metal and then um, paint it and all that. And I really don't want to do that right this minute. Um, I might change the way I do this later, but um, uh, as of right now, I just want to get this thing in here and get this thing running. Um, so I'm going to leave those, got the holes drilled, put the radiator in, like I said, with a little space, um, and we should be good. Okay, got a set of bolts, went to the hardware store and got some bolts and nuts um, 
to attach that. You got a little bit longer um, one for the uh, other side um, when we mount it to the um, car itself. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I got it mounted in there. Um, you can see I, I left the space between the front of the car and the radiator um, using these little uh, black spacers here. I got the bolt in there. I tightened it up so much that it just bent this little dude, but it's all right. Um, uh, you can see the, this is the back side where they drilled the holes. Um, the main thing on the, on the spacing for me was to keep it away from these little original mounting points so that I could uh, not have to cut those out of the uh, car. Um, so got that in there. So I have plenty of space between the uh, bands and the front of the engine. I got these guys um, setting in here. I need to zip tie this guy onto, the, onto there. But I might end up cutting these because I'm I gotta find the pigtail or cut them and make my own pigtail. Um, so we'll see what I do there. All right, and then so they sent this um, uh, what do you call it billet cap to go with the radiator. Obviously has the plane cap there. So what you do, uh, make sure this cap is tight where you want it. Um, you know, so you can press and loosen it up here and open it um, this way, but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it all the way. Um, and then you wanna face this the direction you want it. So obviously it's gonna be readable from the front of the car if you wanna do it that way. Then you take a um, microfiber cloth or something to protect it. And then you use a mallet and you tap it on there. I'm hoping it's not going to take a whole lot of force. I don't want to bang the crap out of this, so we'll see how this goes. Let's see what it looks like. Nope, it's going to take more than that. Hmm. All right. Still feels like it's not on there. Feels like I got it down on the right side, so I need to get it on the passenger side, the left side. Okay, I think that might have did it. Feels like it's on the radiator cap itself and twisting it off and. Let's see if I can get the cap off. Oh god. Sucker is tight on oh, there. There we go. Yeah. So now you can see it's on the cap. And that was the instructions that it came with it. The only instructions I got from this, as a matter of fact, was how to put that billet cap on. So the rest of it I was winging it. Just doing a couple of little things here. Um, this ignition bypass wire that I hooked up to the positive side of the coil um, isn't needed so I'm pulling that off and then the ECU has a uh, pigtail for the um, tachometer so I'm pulling the tachometer off the negative side of the coil um, that just cleans the coil up gets these wires out of here I'm going to pull them back into the cabin um, and either wrap them up or cut them uh, depending on uh, where they're at all right I went and got some lugs for this um, battery cable um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, put this on the starter. So one end on the starter and, um, the Optima battery that I'm planning on getting should have a lug, um, on this side. So I'm hoping this will be a good enough length that'll get back there. Um, my other option is I could actually put it right here, but I, I want it right on the battery if I can. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this and then possibly get a battery today. All right, kind of hard to see it up there, but on the right-hand side, just below that green wire, the uh, um, 
is where I hooked that power up to the starter. So we're good to go there. I ran it kind of loosely right through here. We'll see what I end up doing with it. Um, after I get up to the top here, it'll be easier to tell. Okay, I went over to the parts store and <clears throat> got some, uh, these are the radiator hoses they recommended for the 68 Mustang and obviously nothing stock on this. <laughs> so um, I took a look at it. Um, so you can see that that's a little long, um, but if we look at the shape, that should work. So what I'm going to do is just cut that end over there, and that should be good. And then this is the lower radiator hose, and I went underneath and I took a look. That actually looks like it's going to fit just about perfect, um, whereas this one will require me to cut it. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I got was an Optima battery. And I got the one that has the uh, side mount um, terminals and the top mount terminals. Um, that'll let me um, uh, put things in different places uh, as I need to. So for instance, I have the um, cable that goes to the alternator or to the fuse and then the alternator. And then I have the other cable that goes down to the um, starter. And that's why I actually put that lug uh, on there because I knew I was going to use the side mount. So. Um, that's going to the starter, this is going to the alternator, and then, um, you know, we can do things like put things, uh, accessories on there um, as well. Alrighty, first hose on. So this was the low radiator hose. I just bought this from uh, O'Reilly's, actually. <clears throat> it's a Gates, um, and it fits pretty well. So I'm going to go with that guy. Uh, didn't have to cut anything on that one. Um, looks like I'll have to cut the top one, but... Um, that shouldn't be a big deal. It looks like it's the right shape. Okay, got the upper radiator hose on. Um, ended up cutting uh, some off the both ends here. Um, so I cut that much, that much off of the um, long end, which is towards the engine there. And then I just trimmed a little bit off on this side. Uh, cause this was a little bit more collapsed and I don't want it collapsing, um, when, uh, the, the, it flows or whatever. So, um, that should be okay the way it is right now. If it, um, if I have any problems with it, I'll trim a little bit more off and kind of, uh, get this bend a little better. Um, but I think it looks pretty good for, uh, being a kind of universal radiator hose and, um, got the bottom one on and now I just need to get... Uh, some heater hoses. Um, I'm probably gonna get a just a short one and loop it for right now because I don't have anything to go to. So I'll do that so I can get the engine started, get some coolant in it, and all that stuff. <laughs> Wind's blowing stuff around. It's getting chilly. Um, anyways, uh, doing some little maintenance things. So like right now, I'm changing the oil and oil filter. Uh, to get it ready to fill up with uh, fresh oil um, prior to starting. Um, I'm also wiring these uh, um, bands in. So um, I changed the end just to something that I already had um, rather than trying to get the other the blade ends that it had. Um, I also took, uh, these are the um, relay uh, switch uh, wires right here that are gonna go to the fans. And I took and ran them along that side rather than that side. I'm just trying to clean things up and make it look a little nicer. Um, so put them around this side. They're gonna, I'm gonna zip tie them and loom them in with the rest of this harness. Um, so that'll look nice. Um, and then, uh, what else? Um, then I'm gonna try and get the battery in and um, do some testing. All right. Feel like i should have videoed a little more of this but um i got the fans wired up um so a couple of things one i when i mounted these you put these tabs on and then you end up uh, cutting them and you can't take them back off and so i wish i had mounted this with these uh, facing down but they're facing up and it is what it is so what i did is i just followed uh, one of those um ribs there and uh, zip tied it in and um, went kind of down. And if you look down, it just kind of disappears in there, which is nice. And then, um, like I showed you, the pink and um, white wires coming from the uh, relays are 
uh, I put those down and then ran them over. And uh, you can see I put this little ground right here. So this is gonna be our ground for the uh, for those fans. So I just tied those in together. And here's the disconnects. So those will be hidden down behind the Valance, <clears throat> which will be nice and pretty clean. Uh, and then I zip tied it in so that uh, it wouldn't come out and run into our um, balancer or anything. So there we go. All right, just to show you that I did actually have a plan for these cables. So I'm gonna tie these together too, um, but these cables will come over to the battery and this is gonna go on that side lug right there. I can't see it, that side lug, that guy. And then this guy is gonna go on top. So that's, that's what those look like and then this is a bit messy right here, but um, once I, I have it all tied right here, and then this is gonna actually uh, tie in together right here. And then we got those going in nice and neat down that way. These going nice and neat that way, all the way to there, and I'll clean it up in the cabin so it'll come out there a little bit cleaner right there. Um, so looking a little better. I still got some cleanup to do down at the bottom as well. I haven't crawled under the car, but I'll do that at some point. But uh, just wanted to make it look a little nicer and uh, keep things out of the way because I'm going to be cranking pretty soon. So I don't want anything hitting these uh, spinning parts. All right, so we got the radiator, the fans all installed. We got the uh, battery in, not hooked up yet. Um, Got the starter in. I'm waiting on hooking up the battery. I got to do some testing on some of the circuits. Uh, Painless recommends doing that with a uh, low voltage charger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put this dude on the two amp trickle charge and see if I can test some of these circuits out real quick. Uh, they recommend doing it on a 10 amp or less charger. So I, that should work. Um, once I get that done, um, we're going to hook this guy up, test cranking it, see if we get oil pressure. Um, and at that point, I need to finish up the exhaust so that we can actually start it and run it.